record, share screen. Um, so let's do this. So yeah, this is the snapshot from Friday. You guys in this room all got one back. Um, so the first one is just a basic difference of cubes. And I didn't want the first one or the first couple to be anything outlandish. So the first one, we're, we're looking at 8x cubed. And that's a cube. And then plus or minus doesn't matter with cubes. Like it matters, but like we can do it either way. So what we identify here is that, hey, these are both cubes. So when you're faced with cubes, you want to find out what the cube roots of these terms are. We call those A and B, just for the sake of the formula. So A is 2x and B is 5. And so as soon as you see cubes, you should be thinking of short set, long set. So this one factors into short set, long set. And the short set, remember, will always mimic the sign of the original expression. So since the original expression was a difference, then short set will be a difference. So 2x minus 5. And then long set will be all positives now because we've already used up our minus. So the first thing in long set is a squared and 2x squared is 4x squared. And then plus just the product of the two things, 2x and 5 make 10x. And then plus the second one, b squared, which is 25. That is absolutely nothing other than just a warm-up problem at that point. So assume you're good to go there. Um, the second one is... Um, uh, look alike. And again, I didn't plant any GCF at this point in the worksheet. I just wanted to see who um, at a very core level just knows how to factor a lookalike. And the idea with a lookalike is that we treat it like a regular quadratic. That's why it's actually called quadratic form. And we divvy up the x to the fourth by putting half of them here and half of them here. And then honestly, it's just regular old factoring at this point. I'm looking for numbers that multiply to make negative 54. So I know I need a positive and a negative. And nine and six should be screaming at you. We want the plus with the six and the minus with the nine. So if you got this far, I know that you know how to factor a lookalike. But if you stopped, then I also know that you need some prodding and some practice and reminding on the fact that you have to look for the offspring creating more offspring. And we're to the point now where you ought to recognize x squared minus 9 immediately. You probably knew it before you finished writing it, that that's just a real basic difference of two squares. So we have to go further. We leave the x squared plus 6 alone. Um, that one's just dead. Like, there's, it's, it's just terrible. But the x squared minus 9 can factor into x plus 3 times x minus 3. And that is a completed project at that point. Good, good. So it takes a turn for the more difficult, I think, starting here. The problems get a little bit tougher. The third one, um, the first thing I'm going to do is look for a GCF, and there isn't one. So it's 9x to the 8th minus 8x to the 4th minus 1. Um, and again, this is just, this is not, you can't look at this and talk about cubes or squares. This is a trinomial, which means that its factorization is going to function like this. That is how we factor trinomials, if they're factorable at all. And you have options at this point in time. You have to decide, do you want to try splitting the 9 into 3 and 3 or 9 and 1? And that's all something that you would have gone through. Uh, I can tell you that it does work to do it like this. And the 8 is a pretty good clue. There's a lot of stuff, if you practice factoring enough, the 9, the 1, and the 8 all collectively work together to give you a pretty good clue about the structure of this. And so obviously I have to put ones because, well, duh, the only way to multiply to make one is one. It, there, there is now a consideration as to where do I want to put the plus and where do I want to put the minus. Because of the balance that we want to get, I'm going to point to this with a red arrow, because we want to get that to come out minus, then we want to put the minus with the more bold product. In this case, we want to make that minus nine to force when we add these two red things together, we want to force a negative answer. And we just do that by putting the minus where it belongs. And again, if you made it that far, I look at that and say, again, there's a kid who knows how to factor a lookalike. So on one hand, I'm happy. But if you stopped, then we've got a big problem because there is a difference of two squares. It's not the first one. The first one you have to accept is dead. It is a sum of two squares. But remember that squares don't work if there's a plus. So we can chalk this one up as dead. 
So we're just gonna carry that around now for the rest of the problem. What is the second one again? Right, it's a difference of two squares. And so it factors into x squared plus one times x squared minus one. That's called a difference of squares. And you always factor them by square root plus square root times square root minus square root. And again, if you made it this far, I'm, I'm a little more pleased and happy and proud. But if you stopped yet again, I have to say, what are you missing? There's another difference of squares. That one at the end is squared minus squared. And so annoyingly, I have to go further yet. So I have nine X to the fourth plus one, he's dead. X squared plus one, he's dead. But then a difference of squares is X plus one times X minus one. And this now has no choice but to be the final answer because the linear factors, the ones that don't have X squareds or X cubes, they're done. So that would be it for that problem. That's a big long, Heavy duty. What's up, bro? Um, I dragged down to the first one. And that was your only mistake? Not bad. Like, really not bad. You're a very strong factor, Brady. You've got a really, really solid, solid grip on how to do this. So, um, yeah, like, if you're going to miss it, miss it. <laughs> miss it with some flames and explosions and stuff. I, I hear I hear you. A uh, fourth one you guys uh, really struggled with. So it starts out as negative 3x to the 8 plus 6x to the 5th um, plus 144x squared. Uh, so step one is, if I'm any good at this job, I've made this clear by now. You've got to look for GCFs. That has not been an issue in problems one, two, and three, but the GCF is now going to be present in problems four, five, well, and not six, but four and five. So without it, we're just toast. Like, I don't know how else to say that. So, and remember that G stands for greatest. Sometimes people get the G and the C and they kind of take them lightly. The greatest is important and the common is important. We need to get the most that we can out of both or all the terms. So first off, whenever our problem starts with a negative, we always at least pull a negative. And then maybe with some assistance from a calculator, because that's normal and okay, you would realize that all the numbers, the three, the six, and the 144 can all be divided by three. And then no need for a calculator here, you would simply observe that they all have multiple X's. Specifically, they all have at least two. So stress this, can't stress this enough, you got to get the GCF. Because when I write these or when a computer writes these, the math problem that we really want you to do is hidden from you, right? So x to the sixth is the result of the first one being um, divided down by negative three and two x's. And then we switch our sign to minus two x to the third. And then we switch our sign to minus 48 and that white thing is the math problem when I wrote this from the beginning that I wanted you to do. And then I'm just sitting there and I asked my dog, I was like, Sophie, what do you think I should do for a GCF? And she was like, <laughs> and I was like, oh, negative three X squared. Thanks, Sophie. It's just random. Like I have a math problem, but I'm going to hide it from you. And that's what the GCF is. So now it's time to factor. So we're going to leave the negative three X squared out front. And then our job is to recognize that yet again, we have a lookalike. And the factoring process of a lookalike is to take the x to the sixth and divvy it into half here and half here. And from this point, you shouldn't struggle with the math part of this. You're in high school. You should know that when two numbers are going to multiply to make a negative, one of them has to be positive, one of them has to be negative. And we're clearly looking for a six and an eight because six and eight have a difference of two. And that's what the middle tells us. So we want the eight on the more bold, the minus on the more bold, and we want the six with the plus. So again, if you can make it this far, on one hand, glass half full, I'm happy because you can factor a look alike. But if you stop here, I'm not happy because you're clearly not listening. The second thing over here, I'll underline it for you. I guess I should call it the third thing is a difference of cubes, right? The first one is a cube plus a six. So it's dead. Um, it has a little bit of potential when we first look at it, but the six breaks it. So now it's time to continue on our pathway. So now we have GCF times first dead factor. And now it's time to factor cubes. Really what you see now underlined in red is no different 
than the very first problem, like when we started class like eight, 10 minutes ago. So we have to think about what's A? Well, A is X. And what's B? Well, B is two. And then we're just going to build a short set, long set following the rules of the signs. And so short set, long set. What sign will be in my short set? Mm -hmm. So A minus B times A squared plus A B plus B squared. Once you use your minus, it's done. And this problem is done. Over. Any questions about that one? I mean, the idea when I ask that, are there any questions, is if you missed it, when you have to try something like it again in about 10 minutes, will you be okay? Do you get it? This this quiz is all about three things. Uh, there's lookalikes, cubes, and then, of course, squares, differences of squares. Um, they're all in there. All right, let's head to the bottom row. Problem number five, even though it's not numbered five, it starts out as negative 108 x to the seventh plus 256x. And so those numbers don't mean anything to me. Those are dead trash numbers. So of course the GCF is gonna be my bailout here. The first thing I know for sure, non-negotiably is that I am pulling out a negative. As you tinker in your calculator, what do you figure out about 108 and 256? Mm -hmm. They're both divisible by four. And four is perfect in this case, because if I pull out a four, they both drop to numbers that we'll quickly recognize. But we can also pull out an X. And so before we head into actually dividing, let's finish off the GCF. So we got out our negative, we got out our four, we got out our X, and now it's time to reverse the distributive property and rebuild. What becomes of the first term? Nope. 108 divided by four. It is 27, thank you. So it's 27 and it also drops to X to the sixth. And then I have to switch the sign on the 256. And when you divide 256 by four, you get 64. And notice that I don't need an X anymore with the 64 because uh, the term had an X, but I GCF'd it out. And I know I say this and if you, it doesn't make sense yet, let's work till it does. That's the math problem I wanted you to do from the beginning. I just sprinkled a little layer of dookie on it. Like that negative 4x is just a random layer of dookie that my dog and I came up with together. I could have picked 11x squared. I could have picked negative 3x cubed. It's just going to be a layer of crap that you have to peel off to find the math problem. The white thing is the math problem. What is it? Um, it's not a, it's you're right it's kind of like a lookalike but it's 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 a difference of cubes it's like you're i mean i don't just it's not a standard lookalike because lookalike generally refers to like a quadratic trinomial lookalike but it's a difference of cubes at its core that's really what i need you to say that is and it it's not a difference of squares because of the 27 so we're going to talk in the next problem about what to do when you can pick from the two and i'll give you my directive on that but this is only a difference of cubes. That is all that it is. And so I'm going to leave the negative 4x out. And I'm going to do what I always do with cubes. If you haven't gotten on this bandwagon yet, well, you're just not trying hard enough. When I see cubes, I need to write down what the A and the B are. A is going to be what? 3x yeah. squared. And you get the squared by dividing the exponent by 3. Whenever you're doing A and B, you divide the exponent by 3. And then what is my B value? 4. Four. And if I can get you to do that, I don't really see how it's missable from here. I mean, I'm not saying that you can't, but it becomes way less missable if you, if you let yourself see the A and the B values. Because now, I'm telling you, it is really just a matter of fill in the blanks. What goes in the small set, short set? A minus B. And what goes in the long set? Now, we're really close to this. Any questions about long set? There's. I usually get questions about, like, how did you get 9x or how did you get whatever? Any questions about that? So the dilemma here was when I wrote this was I was trying to get to spark some dialogue 
even if it was just internal with between you and your brain about is 3x squared minus 4 factorable? It is not. And it's so close and it so wants you to think that it is because x squared minus 4 feels so much like a difference of squares, but the 3 screws it up. 3 is not a square. So any hope he had of saying, look at me, I'm a difference of squares, the 3 shot it, ruined it. This is the final answer. Which leads us then to the last problem, number six, which uh, this is the important one. And I'm glad you guys are here. Um, and as glad as I am that you're here, I equally hope that the people that aren't here are watching this and that they hear this because I'm going to start throwing these at you and I'm going to give you some more specific directions. Problem six is tough. And there are two correct answers, but I'm going to start giving you more directions so that we always get the better one. And so the issue with problem number six is that if you asked 100 people, what is this? If 50 of them said it's a difference of cubes, they'd be right. And if the other 50 said, no, it's a difference of squares, they'd be right. This is the part where I need you to listen. You need to pick the difference of squares from this point on. When you see a problem where it's an option to be one or the other, I need you to pick the squares because we're going to get a more thorough factorization if we pick the squares. Because if we do the cubes, then it turns out that the long set is actually factorable. And Brady and I talked about this on Friday, and it is a, it's a tad bit. By tad bit, I mean it's pretty significantly confusing. So to avoid having to ever have that conversation, here it is. If you have a choice, pick the squares. Got it? You're going to get more out of it, as you'll see. What's up, bud? Um, like, when I saw that, I didn't notice that it was a choice. I guess so. What do you do that on? Now that I'm telling you this, it's now in play that if I put this on a test, no, nah, excuse me, when I put this on a test, I need you to pick the squares. Remember all this stuff that we do, snapshots and homework, it's just practice, right? No one cares. But when you see this going from this point forward, I need you to pick the squares. Got it? Okay. Don't pick cubes when there's a choice. The cubes are going to leave work that actually needs to be done that is really, really hard to understand how to do it or when to do it. So always pick the squares. Having said that, if I observe this now as a difference of squares, and you're welcome to write this down, as with everything I've done today, um, a difference of squares factors into simple plus minus. And so I'm going to take half of the 12 and put it here, and I'm going to take half of the 12 and put it here, and then I'm going to take a plus the square root of 64 and a minus the square root of 64. Well, I just think I have that, but I just can't Right. And the reason that this is important to pick the squares is because now we've observed, um, no, nah, that's not the right, we've exposed all the parts and pieces that are themselves factorable further yet. So I now need to observe this as a, what is that called? Nope. There's the sum of cubes. Um, there is, there's no such thing. We can't factor a sum of squares anyways, and eight's not a square. So, But we can observe that um, if I think of these now as cubes, then I can say that my a value is x to the 6 divided by 3, which is 2. And my b value is the cube root of 8, which is 2. And then if I underline this one, the, the green one I'm underlining, what's a over here? x squared. And B is again two. So what we have here, let me draw like a, a big thick white curtain. In between these, this white curtain on the left and the right, we now see two separated math problems that are both short set, long set. So on the left side of the curtain, I'm going to have a short set, long set. And on the right side, I'm going to have a short set, long set. No guarantees that will be done, but at least we can now say we've expanded it like fully. We've exposed a lot of really good things. So on the left, if I do my short set, long set, I get um, a plus b. Since, since it was originally a plus, short set will be a plus. So it starts out as x squared plus 2. And then I do a squared 
which is x to the fourth, minus ab, which is 2x squared, plus b squared, which is 4. And then on the right side of that big fat vertical white curtain, I have a short set, long set, which will start with a minus, so x squared minus 2. And then the long set will be a squared, so x to the fourth plus ab, 2x squared plus 4. If you take this approach of always observing the optional ones as squares, then your long sets, the ones I'm underlining in green, they'll never be factorable. The only option, or not option, but the only consideration here is, are my short sets factorable? And of course, the first one is obviously trash. x squared plus 2 is the definition of trash. And the x squared minus trash. And the 2, again, breaks it. You go into it thinking, you could be a difference of squares, but then your eyeballs fall on the 2 and you say, I'm out. So that's the final answer. And there is a more sort of circuitous way to get there, which I literally do not want to talk about. Because uh, just from now on, if we always pick the squares, then it'll work itself out. Got it? So I have another snapshot for you. I'll post it on Canvas. I'll post this video on Canvas. So the folks that are out running and jumping and throwing stuff, hopefully they'll stay caught up with us.